Hey, hey, all you Arizona lovers. This is the Finding Arizona podcast. I'm your host, Jose. And I'm your producer, Brittany. And here at Finding Arizona podcast, we collect the local stories of all entrepreneurs and from around the valley. So join us at FindingArizonaPodcast.com where you can hear every episode and see it as well at... YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment below who you wanna see next on our show. And when you're ready to start your podcast, you found the right spot, Found House, your next podcast production company. Now, let's get back to the show. Score big with SeatGeek. Whether it's concerts, sports, or live events, SeatGeek has you covered. Use code Fighting Arizona to get a fantastic $20 discount on your SeatGeek tickets. Catch your favorite live events hassle-free with extra savings. Visit SeatGeek.com and make every experience unforgettable. Welcome back, everybody, to the Finding Arizona podcast. I'm your host, Jose. As always, we bring in fantastic guests every week. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to introduce Joshua and Jade here from Holistic Fitness. Hi, guys. How's it going? Good, man. Thanks for having us. Great. I'm I'm glad to have you aboard. Thank you for coming along on the podcast ride with me. Um, how we do this always is we always ask that very first question on our end is give us a little bit of your origin story and how holistic fitness fits in through the whole timeline of everything. And uh, just give us a little bit of that background story. Yeah. So holistic fitness has been around since late 2022. So, so not okay. super old yet, but not super young anymore. Right. Get it. Uh, yeah, we, we started Holistic Fitness with with kind of the idea to create something that did not exist yet, right? Okay. We to like, look at the the gaps in other kind of like fitness or health and longevity businesses and see if we could fill those gaps all in one yeah. place, right? Yeah. So we wanted to kind of take, you know, not just working out, but nutrition and recovery and, you know, community and to, to some degree, you know, spirituality, whatever that means yeah. for you, and kind of put it all into one place so that you could just come here and do everything that you need for your health and wellness. I love that. That's awesome. Because again, we, and I've kind of gotten into this uh, with my own kind of reading into certain um, holistic health and, and just uh, my own kind of uh, interests in health and wellness, body hacking and things like that. Um, One thing that we tend to forget is that these things are all kind of combined in that way of like, you know, strength and body, body and mind, and all of those uh, types of dynamics is that we sometimes neglect one area when we should be bringing them together and allowing ourselves to to really fully uh, encapsulate all of those different ideologies and really truly become, as they say, holistic, like you guys put together there. Um, And it's really kind of beautiful when you when you see certain individuals and certain groups um, slowly start to get it more and more and and really push the envelope on that. So I I appreciate you guys letting me into that um, into that little bit there. What I'd love to ask you, too, is um, how fitness, your fitness journey and just being uh, practitioners yourselves, how that was was health and wellness always something that was on your mind when was the first time that you actually got into a gym and realized that there's something missing here for each of you because i i imagine that for e- either one especially you know the the story of women it can be very daunting from a gym perspective on how you go about your health and wellness as well yeah you want me to start yeah go for it sure um i guess starting from the beginning <clears throat> Um, so I've been into health and wellness for many years now. Um, I, I'd say I dabbled on and off with the gym when I was younger, kind of into my teens. Um, you know, I grew up pretty, grew up pretty athletic. I played a lot of sports when I was young, nice. uh, but then kind of fell out of it. And, um, just like I said, just kind of dabbled in the gym. I wouldn't say that I really got huge into health and wellness until I really started my career yeah. and then moved out here to Arizona. So I'm from Missouri originally. And I'm an occupational therapist as like, I guess my main career. Um, (laughs) So, so I spent a lot of time in school kind of learning about anatomy, learning about the body, learning about how to take care of yourself so that you can live a long, happy, healthy life. Um, So that kind of led into the gym. Um, And once I met him, uh, I started getting more into, like you kind of mentioned earlier, like biohacking, things like that for the body. 
Um, but I'd say like the biggest thing for me that really kind of like kick started me full throttle into the health journey was yoga. Okay. Uh, so I started yoga several years ago doing it regularly. Nice. And like you mentioned, it's kind of that mind body experience that really reeled me in. Um, not Got just it. the physical aspects, but the spiritual, the mental aspects. So I started doing yoga a lot for my own mental health. And then I started to see the physical benefits of it, of course, and started to see how everything in the body is related. Yeah. And so at that point, I kind of just dove in deep to yoga, um, ended up going to Bali to get certified to learn how to teach yoga. Wow. And yeah, that kind of all just fell hand in hand with what his goals were for the gym. And I'll, I'll let him pick up from there. Yeah. So, so my journey, I, I played football from seven years old. So like, I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up in Texas. So football was a religion. Right? Oh yeah. That's definitely a religion out there. What uh, position did you play? Um, fullback running back. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was fun. And then, you know, into my late teen years into early adulthood, I actually completely fell out of health and wellness and went the exact opposite direction. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I, um, I became really unhealthy. I was just partying, like smoking cigarettes, doing, doing not good things for my, my health. And wow. Yeah. And then I, a few combination of different things where like, I, I saw three of my grandparents die, like really terrible deaths. Oh, like, that's unfortunate. Yeah. And like, but it was directly, you could see like di the direct correlation between the way in which they lived their life and the way yeah. that it ended. And I was like, Oh, like, wow. Like it, it really matters. And I was like, yeah, you know, force me. Was, to was it, oh, I'm so sorry. It, uh, like, I'm just curious. Was it health and wellness related? Like health, health related? Yeah, I mean, so one grandparent died of Parkinson's, one okay. died of bone cancer, and then one died of um, a couple of different things. The, the, the first, uh, they were paralyzed about 30 years before they died, but then I watched them kind of like eat themselves to death almost yeah. after that. So it was like just watching the unhealthy lifestyle of not taking care of yourself, like regardless of whether you're paralyzed or not, like, it's yeah. directly, you know, you're going to fall apart. Yeah, uh, like okay, wow, like sugar cookies, uh, ice cream, all of these things all the time, not working out and not taking care of your body for sixty years, you're going to fall apart, and it's not going to be pretty. Yeah, and it was wow, this really big smack in the face. Like, granted, and then at the same time, you know, smoking cigarettes, I was getting like an upper respiratory infection every few months. It's wow, like, yeah, you know, it's like it's like you, it's not good. Like I could see it's like okay, so like this needs to change. And so then mm -hmm. I became like completely obsessed with like health and wellness and biohacking, using a sauna and using the red light therapy and doing all of these different modalities and things, including yoga and working out. Yeah, and then kind of integrating that into my own life. And and after like a few years of that kind of like obsessed pathway, um, it just kind of molded from this entrepreneur spirit of like, let's, let's make a business out of it. Yeah. Uh, so now that you bring that up and thank you again for both of you sharing that, because it is, it is a vital part of, you know, learning about you guys, learning about where this intention comes from, because there is a level of like connection that I always feel that the owners and the entrepreneurs need to have with their clients and clientele. I think that it's very important to hear, I mean, just the beauty that is your life story and those connection and networking pieces that kind of really relate them to you and relate them for you to share those stories and allow, um, just again, the connection and having a, a, the the wherewithal to share that stuff because they, I, I always felt like if you can talk to the owner for five minutes and get their real intention and, and life story, you're more than more than not likely to want to work with them, share with them, want to do stuff with them um, in one way or another. Because yeah. I know from my end, it's like, yeah, that's like hearing that. I'm like, dude, I want to come and 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 talk to you a little bit about, you know, because for me, it's always been kind of an athletic career of like doing stuff. And and I did track in, in cross country in high school mainly and uh, went into uh, ASU started, you know, really getting intentional about working out. Um, and then came, uh, a real issue of like, it is this just kid, like teenager thinking that he can do it, do it all. I, I pulled something in my back, moving, moving books 
from my from my dorm room and that has always been the crux of my my health and wellness of like you know it comes back every so often and and it just you know you don't take care of it after a while and you you kind of intentionally uh not doing the right stuff and and it's really now i'm like i'm intentionally stretching every night i'm intentionally like doing trying to make sure that that it doesn't become more of an issue and one of the big things that i want to do and i've been starting to look at is again yeah the the sauna and the ice bath more predominantly the ice bath um and wanting to do those more and more because i feel like i I feel so much better after, after using them and doing them. And it makes me feel like, okay, I'm on the right path. Um, but again, it's like, you know, you, you do what you can. I always say that every little bit that you do towards that goal is momentum. It helps in every single way. And so I want to share those kind of stories because again, like my mom has health issues herself and I always want to share those biohacking ideas so that she can feel like she can get to those goals and and really reach them so that she can feel like, I don't know, just not that it's a dead end, but that it's just something that she can do and and manage herself and, and not be reliant on, on having being forced to, to do the right things, but just do it herself because they're there, there there's opportunities to, to, to get better and feel better. Um, But you brought up the, uh, the entrepreneurial spirit. And I, I want to ask this from a, a way of like, was business and entrepreneurship a part of your family at all? Was there something or someone that you saw that was like, Hey, they can do it. So can I, or was it just something that you stumbled upon and like having that feeling of like, I want to go this route? Um, I mean, I had known that my dad tried his own, a couple of his own businesses and had failed like yeah. um, when he was a younger man. Um, I had known that, but it was, there was no real like examples anywhere. I think, I think it was actually more out of like a rebellious nature than anything. Like, I don't Perfect. want anybody to tell me what to do. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't want, I don't, I do not want to do what you tell me to do. And I don't yeah. want to, for you and i want to be yeah. in charge of my own destiny and i i think it kind of like spawned out of this like like fuck you to everybody <laughs> like i absolutely. just like, do my own thing absolutely and i get it like it's it's definitely something that comes out of that intention of like yeah i don't want to work for anyone my dad's the same way he's he's grown up that way all his life and i've seen him move from one business to another and i've seen him work for someone else and he had that same mentality i don't want to I can work for you guys. Like I, I, I think I can do way better on my own. And so sure. I, I definitely uh, can relate. And I've actually seen him succeed at certain businesses. He was, uh, he had his own food truck at one point, and then we moved down here to Phoenix, and he transferred into now doing um, kind of a handyman job. And so he's, you know, always been kind of that. D D Y I R like I can do it myself and I can succeed on my own. So I've always been kind of surrounded by that intentional entrepreneurship spirit. And I feel like my brother's like you, where he's like, I don't, I don't, I don't abide by those rules. I don't want to to do that. And so I'm, I'm my own man. I'm going to do what I can. And so I, I, I totally understand and I get it. And it's definitely something that it is, few and far between to want to say no to the standard quo and do your own thing and have the the mental fortitude and the the strength to kind of prevail on that level and just kind of keep keep at it but i think we've seen it all like even i mean if you've seen the michael jordan documentary you have to have something that keeps you motivated and like spawning that level of like I got this. I'm going to keep doing what I need to do to kind of prevail above all the rest. And so kudos to you. I mean, it's been what, two years, two and a half years that you've been doing this and, and keep at it. Like, that's all I got to say. Um, yeah, of course, man. Of course. Um, is there, so I'd love to get into holistic fitness as a whole, like as a service-based product and kind of 
run the gamut of like what you guys offer just to kind of get an intentional idea of like if someone comes in, walks in the front door and really wants to say, I want to change my life for the better. How does one go about it? Where, you know, what do you guys offer? What are some of your personal favorites? That would be great too, to kind of help people get on the right step. Yeah. So we like to, we like to really emphasize the fact that like, this is, this is not a gym. This is a, this is a, like a transformation facility, right? Awesome. Like, you're not, you're not paying for a fitness membership. We just so happen to use fitness as one of the tools to help you transform your life. Awesome. Right? So when you, when you come in, we're going to sit down and we're going to, we're going to talk about your goals. We're going to like, where do you want to go? Like why? And like, why, like, why is it important to lose weight? Like, why do you want to feel more confident? Not, not just like, ah, oh, I just, I'd like to lose a few pounds. And then like, really why? Like try to like yeah. dig into the, the emotional deep connection, connective reasons of like why it is that you would like to change your life in this way and get healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we kind of take a look at all the things that, have not worked in your past. Like, why are you not there now? What have you tried that has not worked for you yet? And then coming to the realization, like, it's not your fault. Like, it's it's not your fault. Like, you just didn't have the right tools at the time to get to where you needed to be. Right? Like, we can yeah. only do, we can only do the best that we can at the time with the tools that we have. Yeah. Right? But it just means that you didn't have the right tools yet. And so then yeah. we sit down and we we build a, an exact plan for the exact amount of time that it's going to take you to get to where you want to be. It's like, okay, you weigh. 215 pounds now the best you've ever weighed or the best fitness that you've ever been in you were at 175 it's like okay that's about almost about 40 pounds it's like okay that's going to take you about 18 to 20 weeks so we're going to build you an 18 to 20 week plan and we're going to lay out exactly what we're going to do in that time we're going to give you workouts with a trainer like in a group fitness setting we're also going to give you um private workouts every single week with a one-on-one -on -one trainer with an accountability coach that way like you're getting that one-on-one -on -one workout time to work on like the small skills. And then you're also getting that time to like create that connection with the coach and then like work on that accountability and make sure that you're on the right track, not only with the fitness, but with your nutrition, with your mindset, with your emotions, with your family, with your connections, and just like make sure everything is right. Um, and then we give you access to our recovery center, which has an ice bath and dry sauna and red light therapy. And then we also give you access to yoga classes with Jade. And then and then you have the community aspect of that as well. So like we, we do fun things. We went at a, at a on a happy hour the other day. Um, awesome. We, yeah. yeah we, had a, um, we just did an internal six week challenge where we all competed against each other. We, we're going to have what we're calling the holistic summer games on nice. this, this month where we're all going to go outside, have some fun with some like water guns and slip and slides and, and compete against <laughs> other for prizes. And it's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be 60 year old people. It's like sliding down. And <laughs> sliding I love it. Down inside it's gonna be fun and so you're getting all these things and we just lay out exactly what needs to happen we break it into three phases the conditioning phase the work phase and then the maintenance phase yeah. right that way we can make sure that you can maintain this for the rest of your life and then we help you every single step of the way until you get to where you want to be awesome awesome i mean again it's like you you have this way of going about it where it's just truly kind of enticing on that level of like i want so much to be a part of this because there is a community aspect, because there is individualism, there's kind of this run of like the gamut of like, you could do it and like any, you could, you could go about it any way where it's like, it's just really kind of truly beautiful that you have this opportunity to, sh to really t participate on that scale. And again, having that community, I think is just really great to, to the individual because you do find yourself in those moments of like, I feel alone. I feel desperate to want to try and be a part of something that I haven't felt like I was a part of for, for any means of my life. And what you guys are providing is this level of confidence that is something truly beautiful for the individual that they can feel open and honest about their goals. And that is something that I feel like everyone should have in their life on, on that health and wellness scale, because it does provide that, that level of honesty that, you know, you wouldn't get when you're doing it by yourself and right. that level of like, you know, um, intensity too, because, you may have a certain set goal, but it doesn't mean that you have the wherewithal to want to, to push yourself to it. Whereas right. if you, like you had, like you said, you have someone who's going to keep you reliable and accountable. You're going to reach it further uh, and quicker than if you were on your own. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like, and 
like for example, I I had one of our, our most wonderful members. Her name is Glinda. She like walked in my office the other day, and she was she was telling me about a conversation that she had with her sibling, where she was kind of describing her experience while she was signing up here, and she was like. Because she was trying to get her sibling to come here as well. And her sibling was giving her like all of these different reasons of why they couldn't sign up. Mm -hmm. And Glenda was like, I did that to Josh too. And he just looked at me and he was like, well, it sounds like you just described all of the reasons why you should sign up. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. He was like, I appreciate that you're going to call me on my shit. Yeah. (laughs) It's truly beautiful too, because it's like, again, you run the, you, you run into these situations where like people make up these different routes of like, I can't, I can't, I can't. When in actuality you can, you really can. If you just, you just take the leap and have a little bit of faith and not only in yourself, but in what you find in this group and in the setting, um, you can really you really make a difference in your own life. And I would hope to make a difference, like you said, in other people's lives as well, from that sister's perspective of like, you know, I'm really trying to get you to be health healthier. Let's go together. Let's, you know, let's participate in this together so that we both can, can get on a healthy start together and, and not have to worry about, you know, our own issues and whatever that may be. So that's really great. I mean, I think that, what you guys have here is is really beautiful because I always find it so interesting from the outsider looking in on how different groups go about the culture is what it comes down to. It's like, how do you guys enrich other people's lives? And seeing it from from this end and hearing it always makes me excited because it's like, I I run into so many stories where I'm like, I'm so excited that you do it this way. I'm so excited that you guys run it this way because it just really makes me want to help you guys out even further by either going myself or just throwing someone else into the loop and just getting them involved as well. Um, So it's really great that I can hear it from you guys. One of the other things I'd like to start getting into is a little bit of the more personal side and just kind of, you guys are a couple and I would love to understand how you guys, first off, how holistic fitness came into your own lives as far as like, did you guys meet beforehand? Did you guys come up with some of the, some of the um, philosophy together to, to start the business? How did this all work out? I think she tells us one better. Uh, so (laughs) we're laughing because we actually, we, I'd say we met maybe one or two months before he had the idea to start a gym. Nice. Uh, And so we were not even dating yet. Right. We had just, you know, gone on a few dates, um, weren't serious or anything, but definitely, you know, we liked each other. We were vibing on everything. Um, and I remember him telling me one day, just casually, like in passing, like, I think I'm going to start a gym. Nice. I I was like, okay. Like, cool. And, you know, if somebody just tells you that, like, out of nowhere, you're like, great, good luck. Like, oh, you think they're bullshitting, right? Yeah. And, like, a week later, he's, like, planning starting this gym. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, you're serious about this. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're, you're, you're really starting a gym. Okay. So, meanwhile, like, like I said, we weren't even really dating yet. And so, somewhere along that timeline, within the first few months, you know, like, we started actually dating and as we're, I guess, building the foundations of our relationship, we are now physically building an actual gym together. That's so beautiful. We, we kind of got thrown in head first very yeah. quickly. Yeah. Um, and I joke all the time. It's like, I feel like we've been through 10 years of marriage, like <laughs> in a year, yeah. um, just because of all the crazy shit we have been through trying to literally start a business together while trying to start a relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely what has if- not it has not been easy. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like, what a way to test it too. I mean, it's yeah. like, if oh, you, you know, if you know, she's a keeper, she's going to start a business with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she did all of the artwork in the whole gym. She showed up every single day. Wow. Like she painted everything. <laughs> she helped me plan everything. Any, any gap that I needed filled, she filled it. She showed That's up with awesome. food and lunch while we were eating or while we were working in the heat. Yeah. We built the whole thing in the summer by hand by hand me and my best friend with Jeez. no AT because yeah. <laughs> I couldn't because no bueno. we hadn't ma- started making any money yet so yeah you guys were putting in the labor work and and putting in the sweat equity first and then and then going about it but I have to say you know like we we, we brought it up it's like 
what a way to test a relationship. Just to give you a little insight about all of this, my wife and I, we met, I was like probably four or five episodes in. And I say this because it takes a lot for the man to kind of be honest about their goals, their intentions. I feel like a lot of men try to, you know, keep that out as the arm lengths away really at the beginning of the relationship, because I was so scared to tell her about my podcast. I was like, cause it, it took a big chunk of my free time and now to like, Oh, there's this girl now. And I need to kind of tell her, I can't go out with, you know, certain days of the week because I'm recording. And yeah. like, I have to like be honest about what I'm doing here. Cause you kind of like ask like what are you doing like what are you what are your plans like what are you doing this weekend and things like that and so i was doing it on the on the side on the, the weekends and stuff like that and so i was like you know what i just got to tell her and be honest and i really told her and she was like oh really i love podcasts and she binged <laughs> all of my episodes where she just oh. like well, she watched it and she listened to it and she was like i love it at the time she had her own business and she's like I love it. I wish I could help you a little bit more. I just have my own things that I'm working at. It wasn't until after we got married and after we got into having a house together, that's like, she's now been so much a part of this. She's, she started off as just a, a photographer. She would come with me on date podcast dates, where we would, <laughs> we would go record. She would take photos for me. And then we would, get dinner. If we weren't already at a food place, we would get dinner afterwards and stuff like that. And then now it's like, she's a producer. She gets everyone involved. Like she gets all the people who want to be on the show. She does, like you said, everything that I can't do or can't find time to do. She's the person that I rely on most. And, and it's really, it's, it's truly kind of like great that you found someone like that, that who's willing to see your, see what you have as an intentional goal and just really say, look, I love it. I want to help you with it. Let me do my thing and let's do this together. So it's really, it's great that you guys found each other on that, on that level. And again, kudos, I mean, for sticking around with no AC and trying to do everything together like that. I, I'm like, I, I tell her all the time. I'm like, Thank you, because I couldn't do half of the things. And now we're starting to produce other people's podcasts and and really making this into a, a business that it's like I could not even fathom the amount of things that we were able to do without her being by my side and and really pushing me to to really push this along and, and reach for the stars on that level. So, you know, I, I really do love it when couples come together and like really push each other like that. It's really cool. Yeah, it's cool. And she called me on my shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, she does too. She's like, she's the yin to my yang. She's like, literally like, she's the businessy head of it. I'm the dreamer. I'm like, I love this. I want to do this. I want to, you know, we can do this. We can do that. And she's like, hold up, bring it back. Let's do the the intentional step-by-step, step, make sure that we're doing it the right way. We don't want to go about it, you know, too far in and, and, and don't, don't overstep and, you know, all these things. Cause you know, we could run into an issue here. We can run into an issue there and all that stuff. But she's really kind of the businessy head of like, look, we can make this happen, but we have to go about it the right way. So she's, again, the yin to my yang. Anything that I have as a goal, she's like, okay, I love it, but let's put real steps to it. So she's really great about that. Um, but so here's where I where I where I want to go into the level of like like you said, call your shit out on it. Um, what do you guys do when you're not there at the at holistic fitness? When you guys are at home, are you guys talking a lot about what you've did on a daily basis? Are you guys having personal one to ones? Are you guys communicating about your relationship when you're not in the in the work mode? What are the types of things that you guys enjoy doing when not working me got it Go for it. um yeah i'd say that amongst other things has been one of the things that we've been learning with time um i kid you not we used to have to schedule everything on a calendar like we'd be scheduling date nights we would schedule sex like like we were so busy that you ha you, you got to make time for business meetings 
personal meetings, you know, relationship meetings, meetings yeah. about our cats. Like we have, we both have cats right now. We just moved in together. We're still trying to get them to not kill each other. So <laughs> like, <laughs> there, there's always things on our to-do list, but um, no, I'd say that we are really good about prioritizing like time for just one-on-one, like you said, like making sure we have regular date nights where we, we actually intentionally yeah. will put our phones away, leave them in the car not talk about business the whole time and just talk about our days, talk about what's going on in life, how we're doing emotionally, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's challenging for sure because when business is busy, you know, it's hard to always get out of that mindset. Yeah. Like there'll be times and we're both, I mean, it happens to both of us, but like, even if we are say like on a, on a date or something or, or having time where we're just at home trying to relax and like, one of us will have a thought that pops into our head about business. And then we start, you know, getting on a tangent about business. Tangent, yeah. <laughs> isn't, a, isn't a bad thing for sure. Um, but there is like this intentional, you have to kind of make the choice and like, say, okay, like one more conversation about this, like five more minutes, like let's sort this out yeah. and then let's put business away and let's get oh, back. Yeah. Just relaxing, just enjoying life and yep. make sure we have time for that. Uh, Joshua, let me let me let me ask you this is there any any part of your day where you're not like your brain doesn't shut off about everything holistic fitness like is there any part of your day where you're just like if it's not like your actual clients but your you know the the daily maintenance of having a building to yourself um you know your own personal fitness goals like those types of things it's like the ethic or the like you know wanting to continuous education on the the ide- ideologies that you guys share it's like even in those four categories i can't imagine your brain shutting off or getting away from that it's like how how easy is it how easy or how hard is it to like pull away in those in those date nights um just depends on how good the business is doing you know yeah. <laughs> great, great answer great answer <laughs> I love if it. If, if if everything's kind of smooth, smooth sailing right at that point in time, it's it's pretty easy to just kind of pull away. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty good at like disengaging. Like I I I find lots of comfort in binge watching TV shows. Nice. What's <laughs> like your What's I, your go to right now? Um, right now I'm watching Hell on Wheels. Oh, cool! Nice. I was good. just finishing up. Um, oh gosh, uh, the Night Agent over on Netflix. Okay. I just yeah, finished yeah. that one. Yeah. I've been meaning to get to it and I just finally had some downtime. I'm like, Oh, I'll, I'll get into it. I'll start yeah. watching it. Yeah. I will, I will carve it out. I will, <laughs> I will, I will be like, Jade, stop talking to me, please. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, like, I need to download this information. I to, right yeah. I need to watch this show and just kind of like allow myself to just kind of go into that escapism mode of just yeah. not thinking about anything. Yeah. And so, um, but in terms of date nights, no, it's pretty fun. Like we, we even had an idea recently where, uh, we're going to get a notepad and a, um, Polaroid camera. Nice. So we can still not have our phones, but while we're on the date, all of the things that I don't know about you, but when we're on dates and we do have our phones, we probably look up like 50 questions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Oh, about this? When's this going to happen? All oh, this. And so like, but write the questions down that way we're not forgetting any of them. And then, and also, then look them up later. Like right. I love that. we have the camera that creates real pictures so we can still capture the memories, but without the distraction of a cell phone. So I can let you know now we, I should probably do that exact same thing because we do have a Polaroid camera. I bought this as a birthday present for her and she, she uses it every so often for like family events, but it's just, it's now sitting in a cubby and we, we should use it more often. And that is so great as an, as an intentional piece of advice for date nights in general, for all, all couples, because I'll, I'll let you know this. It's, it gets even harder when you have a kid, because if you're not talking about the business, you're talking about them. They talk about the yeah. kids and we even have two dogs or we have a dog and two cats ourselves. And oh, the two, yeah, the two cats <laughs> were, were hers before we, or while we were dating. And then the dog we got after we got the house and we had to like start her off because she's a rescue slowly integrating with the cats because the cats were just kind of like what is this big animal doing here like what is this other third animal like and the dog was already used to because it was in a household full of other rescues like cats and other dogs so it was so used to playing with 
cats and dogs itself that it was like, ooh, other cat. And we had to like train her, not because they were not cats that they wanted to be play with. They were like cats that were like, leave me alone. I'm going to do my own thing. You stay over there. And so, yeah, yeah it's like in, being intentional in these moments can get cumbersome. But when you put the phones down and, and prioritize, like you said, and having those other means of like, okay, I have this question. Let's write it down for later on. And it just makes it so much more fun too, because it's like, it's like a mystery game. It's like, we, we had this question. Let's find out later together. And like, you know, you could be in the midst of binging and be like, Oh, remember when we talked about this? Like we, yeah. I found out the answer and now, and now the mystery is solved. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, I love that you guys are intentional about these different opportunities. Great that you guys are scheduling. Great that you guys are doing all these right things as far as as a relationship goes. And it really does it does make me excited for you guys uh, for the future. So now that's going to lead me into my next couple of questions. And just before I get into it, I do have and before because I just remembered it now. I brought up uh, continuing education, and I yeah. would love to get your guys's like how you guys go about that and how you guys educate yourselves to help inform others that you are, you know, your clients, people who are asking questions from you, how you guys go about your own continual education. Is it podcasts? Is it books? Is it uh, seminars? Uh, Whatever it may be. I would love to kind of help myself because I'll let you know, I'm a big Tim Ferriss fan. And so he not only has books, but he has a podcast and some of it goes into biohacking on depends on who he brings in. Um, but I'd love to get your perspective on how that, how that goes about in your lives. Yeah. I mean, I, I listen to podcasts all day, every day. So awesome. I'm constantly learning um, specific, I mostly Joe Rogan. So I listen to Joe Rogan a lot and you get like all of the experts that he brings on. Yep. Uh, but I think, I think a lot of it comes from uh, being uh, introduced to situations that are unique to individuals that you then have to learn how to help them. So like, it's cool. So it's like somebody will have a problem with their shoulder or something. It's like, but I don't understand necessarily exactly what the, the exact answer is for them at that moment in time. But Mm -hmm. the, the cool thing is, is you take, you take the base level of knowledge that we have already, and that allows you to have the knowledge of where to look for the right answer. Right. So it's like now it's like I can use what I know already to go find the correct answer to help you in this specific situation. But then the next time that somebody has something similar, you are even closer to fixing their problem. So it's like this is constant like building of this repertoire of information such that you can solve new and different issues. Yeah. Have you thought about even for yourself just to kind of keep do you have like a clientele like list of like previous injury or things like those situational things. Do you keep that somewhere or is it just all in your brain? Um, it's, it's definitely all in our brain for the most part, but like, you know, it's, if you come to my class, the first two times you might need to remind me that you have a shoulder injury, but after that I will remember. That's awesome. I mean, again, it's like, like you said, once I, once I can pinpoint and like, remember, it's like you got, closer to the issue at hand and you can really cater and, and to the individual. Right. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, it's, 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 it's all part of the, the creating that genuine and personal connection and relationship with each one of the clients. It's like, you know, I, for a lot of the exercises that I coach, I might, before you walk through the door, know what the alternative thing is that I'm going to have you do. And it's yeah. like, before, like, while everybody's kind of stretching, is kind of staying there waiting for everything to start. I might walk up to the client. It's like, okay, when I tell everybody else to do this, I want you to do this. Got so it. knowing that that's kind of like what they need at that time. Perfect. <laughs> um, so now moving on to kind of the future and future goals, I would love our people who listen to us kind of help you out for the future and see what we can do. What are some goals for you guys overall for holistic fitness or just, you know, something that you're trying to achieve maybe the latter half of this year, anything that you guys want us to be able to, our listeners to be able to maybe help you achieve. We just need to get the word out, man. I think, I think 
Yeah, I think we just need more people to know that we are here and we're ready to help, right? Because we're we're still in the phase of building up the clientele to the point where we need it to be. Um, it's like I'm no I'm no longer worried about it going under, but we're past that part, which is nice. nice. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm no longer concerned about anything, but we're not yet where we would like to be. Of course, you yeah. know. It, it, so it's just we just need more people to hear about us so that we can help more people. Pushing the envelope, I get it, man, and. Hopefully there will be a couple of listeners who want to come out and and seek you guys out because I think from my perspective, you guys are going about it the right way. You guys have something very special at, at Holistic Fitness and just something that people can really um, sink their teeth into as far as something personalized, something communal, and something that'll definitely benefit them overall health-wise. Uh, so I got nothing but high hopes for you guys. And I, I know that you guys are doing the right thing with the right kind of people. So kudos to you guys for, for doing it for this long. And hopefully we can have you back in um, maybe for like the fifth anniversary or something like that. And and just yeah. kind of talk about where you guys been, how you guys got there and, and overall just kind of check in on you guys. So I appreciate you for coming in and sharing your story. Um, I leave this last part to let you guys let everyone know where they can find you address phone number, anything and everything social media wise. So the floor is yours. Go ahead. Yeah, guys. So you can find us every every handle that we have on every social media, including our website, is exactly the same. So it's it's holisticfitness.us. Um, w h o l e i s t i c fitness.us. So that's our website. That's our Instagram handle. Um, the phone number is whatever pops up on Google. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we memorized that. I one have yet. not memorized that one. <laughs> it's not my personal cell. So if you if you click on Google, it's that number that pops up. Um, if you hit us up on Instagram, I think that's where we're the most active, but you can hit us up on pretty much all social medias. Um, shoot us a call, book an appointment. We're, we're ready to help. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Jade. Before we go, we do have a little bit of our outro. You can hear every episode of our podcast at FindingArizonaPodcast.com. Make it easy for you guys to connect with us social media wise. That's Finding Arizona Podcast under everything. Last but not least, if you want to send us a line, FindingArizonaPodcast at gmail.com. And uh, we'll try and make every one of your guys' wishes for who wants to be in the podcast. Make it happen just like Holistic Fitness here. And always, we end every episode with a kisses, hugs, and belly rubs to our four-legged friends. We will see you next time. Bye, y'all. Yeah. Bye, Bye, Bye.